Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am really excited to share my tutorial about how to make these edible glass St. Patrick's Day mugs. They make a really fun and unique cake topper. I'm starting with clear plain isomalt. These are some pre-cooked tiles that I melted. You can definitely cook from the crystals as well. And then I poured it into this shot glass mold from Michaels. I'll link the one I used in my description here if you'd like to find it. I made five of them and then I let them cool completely. Once they're totally cooled and hardened, you can unmold them from the mold here and it makes the perfect little shot glass shape. Next, to shape the handles, I melted some more of the clear isomalt and just poured some little streams here onto my heat safe mat. I let these cool for just a minute or two, just until I could handle them with my gloves on here. Then I rolled and pinched and pulled them out and bent the ends around like this to form the handle shape, cutting off the ends so that way there'd be a nice flat part that'll attach to the mug more easily. They all ended up looking a little bit different from each other, but I thought that was okay. I kind of liked the irregular look they all had when compared to one another. Lastly, I colored some of the isomalt green. I have some previous tutorials on how to color isomalt, but it's very easy. You just add a drop or two of gel coloring to the melted isomalt. And so with the green isomalt, I made some little shamrocks here with this mold. Once all my pieces here were totally cool, I was able to start assembling the mugs. Using my kitchen torch, I very carefully melted the ends of the handles and pressed them onto the mug. And then once they were loosely attached, I gave them a little more flame just to melt them onto one another a little bit more. And then you can also use the kitchen torch to attach the shamrock to the front as well. It probably goes without saying, of course, but please be very, very careful when using a kitchen torch and be mindful how long you have the flame set, just to be safe. Normally, I'd use the torch also to get rid of any air bubbles that may be in my isomalt. However, in this case, I kind of thought they gave like a frosty look to the mug, so I left them in. I liked how they looked. And here is how they turned out. I also made a few fondant decorations to put on the front and the top of the cake. You can find my easy fondant recipes on my channel here and on my website at customcakesandcupcakes.com. Here I'm spelling out the word sloincha the Gaelic word to cheers for good health often said around St. Patrick's Day. This is the three quarter inch alphabet embossing stamp set from my shop in Leah font. And then of course we will cut around it with a lucky four leaf clover. I also cut out a few smaller size four leaf clovers to match as well. I made this fondant color using Chef Master Leaf Green and Forest Green together in my Easy Fondant recipe. I then gave these a little bit of shimmer using Emerald Edible Luxe Dust by Sweets and Treats Boutique. It's really easy to use, I just like to dust it on with a big fluffy brush. Next, I'm going to be painting in the text using this airbrush color by Chef Master. It's a metallic green. Airbrush colors work really well as edible paints. Then 
Then I just let my fondant pieces dry and harden overnight. I'm covering my cake in the same color, the Chef Master Leaf Green and Forest Green in my vanilla buttercream frosting. You can find my recipes for cakes and buttercream and fondant and more on my website. I do have more in-depth tutorials on my channel here about how to frost a smooth and sharp buttercream cake. So please feel free to check those out if that interests you. Otherwise, basically I like to smooth it onto the sides using my offset spatula just like this. And once the cake is totally covered, then I use a tall metal scraper to smooth it out. I do prefer metal scrapers to other materials because I can heat this up under hot running water and it helps to smooth out the buttercream really well. Then I level the top edge with my small angled offset spatula, just pulling in any excess toward the center and swiping it away. Then this cake went into the fridge to allow the buttercream to set up while I prepared my ganache drip. I do also have another more in-depth tutorial about making ganache. However, the basic ratio I like to use is three to one white chocolate chips or white baking chips to heavy cream. After I roughly measure out these two ingredients, I heat up the cream in the microwave just until I can see bubbles forming and then pour the warmed cream over the chips. Make sure they're all covered by the cream and then I cover with a towel and allow the chips to melt for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then I start to stir. Once the mixture is smooth and no longer lumpy, you can add the coloring you'd like. Here I'm going to keep the same color that I've been using throughout this with the leaf green and the forest green, both liquid gels by Chef Master. I also found that by adding a little emerald edible Lux dust by Sweets and Treats Boutique gives it a pearl sheen when it drips. You'll want your cake to be nice and cold when you go do your first test drip. This helps cool the ganache as it drips and stops it in its place like this. When I was happy with how the drip is going to look, I added a few more on each side approximately where I was planning to put the mugs we made to make it look like green beer or whatever your beverage of choice is dripping out of them. I also added a little bit in the front because I was going to add some mugs to the front as well and we needed to make a little spill there too. Before it was set up, the ganache made a nice sticky surface to pop my mugs into, so I stuck them right into the ganache on the cake. Once they felt secure, I was able to drip more ganache into and running out of them just like this. I'm using a pointed chafing spoon. I think they're often used for sauces or drizzling sauces on top of food. It actually works really well for ganache because you can hold a lot in it and then also control where it's going well too. Fill it up as high as you'd like. Then all I had to do was add my fondant shamrock pieces. I attached each of these with just a little bit of buttercream on the back. And here is how it turned out. Let me know what you think and also what would you fill your edible mugs with. Thanks so much for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day.